San Francisco's ruin, ongoing ruin, ongoing train wreck is a warning to ultra left officials everywhere. It's a pretty good summary of what's going on. And it is a warning. It's like, all right, you want to, you want to play this social experiment and see how things end up? Look at San Fran. How is that working out? Look at Chicago. How is that working out for all those folks who can no longer shop at their local Walmart? How about Portland? Hey, you want to go kayaking? No can do. There's no REI. It left. That's what we're talking about. Let's get into it. Let's see what we've got going on. Here we go. It's tech industries are still booming. Uh, yeah. It's the financial hub for the whole of California with the state now the fifth largest economy in the world. Not in the United States, in the world. California dwarfs so many smaller countries just with sheer numbers, right? And it's home to some of the world's biggest companies. Add it all up and San Francisco should be one of the best retail centers globally. An easy place to sell every kind of luxury good, fashion essentials, and high-end electronics. The money is there as well as the people to spend it. It's all there, right? Yet this week, the department store Nordstrom announced it's shutting its location in the city, joining a growing exodus of big team and big name retailers. Household brands are in despair over the damage inflicted by an ultra woke local government. Same exact thing in Portland. Same exact thing in Portland. Same exact thing in certain lo locations in downtown in Seattle. Y you've had this policy of decriminalizing drugs, homelessness. It's okay. Shoplifting, it's fine. Go ahead and do it. We're not going to really, we're not going to really prosecute you because they felt that, you know, it's, it's racist. You can't do that. that. That's a no go. So you've got all of this stuff working against these businesses. And you know what's, what's interesting is that they don't have to take it. So when their leases are up, when it's, you know, negotiation time, they can't get out of Dodge faster. Walmart just exited a bunch of locations, right? All right. Where do we have the greatest loss prevention issue? Okay. And we've got assaults on the employees and the customers. Okay. Yeah. We're not renewing that one. That's a no go. We're leaving that location. That's where, that's where this isn't, this isn't just opinion. This is hard fact of businesses closing down left and right. T-Mobile is an example that happened. I think after this article was, was written, T-Mobile last week, just last week, and now late last week, a few days ago, announced, yeah, well, you could go visit our other stores in the burbs of San Francisco, but not here near the Tenderloin District, because the Tenderloin in San Fran is just overrun with open air drug activity. It's what you got going on. So you've had policy that's allowed all this to take place. Hey, do your drugs. It's good. We'll give you clean needles. We'll give you a tent. We'll give you a blanket, whatever you need. Food? You need food? No problem. Yeah, we're not going to prosecute you for hardcore drugs. We're not going to prosecute you for drugs at all. In fact, and then we're not going to prosecute you for shoplifting. Anything 950 bucks and below, you're golden. So all of these stores are just these massive targets for this type of lifestyle. And this is a lifestyle. We're not talking about a homelessness issue. We are talking about a drug lifestyle. That is what has happened with San Francisco, with Portland, with Skid Row. It's drugs. It's drugs. It's as simple as that. Until you start to get some of these folks off the drugs, good luck with that. Because these drugs are super addictive. Till some of that changes, until they come out with some new medication to get people sober. And these folks don't want to get sober. This is their life. And these cities have made it okay for people to live their lives this way. But the fallout is a city like San Francisco, its area near where all this is happening, which once used to be a super vibrant shopping area, is basically losing all of its tenants and becoming a vacant wasteland. So add it all up and San Francisco should be one of the best retail centers globally and easy place. Okay. You've got the money is there as well. The people to spend it. 
Yet this week, the department store Nordstrom talked about that. This is a warning here for many British cities, not least as left-wing parties consolidate their dominance following another set of disastrous local elections for the Conservative Party. So we're writing this from the standpoint of being in the UK, right? Push businesses too hard, let crime run out of control, and eventually they will simply up and leave. Boom. Done. And that's what we're seeing in San Francisco. That's what we're seeing in downtown in downtown Portland. That's what we've seen in an area of Seattle. You've got these areas going on. And if you got enough criminal activity, guess what? Nothing's happening, right? It's happening in ultra wealthy California. And very soon it could be happening in London, Bristol, or Cardiff. And these are locations in the UK, right? They've got, they're looking over at San Fran going, oh my gosh, we got the same policies going on here. We got these same liberal woke ideologies that we can already see what's happening there. We don't want them to happen in our locations. Are they going to make adjustments? Probably not because this is all part of an ideology, right? Of ah, don't arrest people. It's good. They're basically good human beings. You know, you know they'll, they'll come to court. If we issue them a summons, they'll come to court. It's a misdemeanor. You got to throw people in jail. You got to make it, you know, if you can't do the, uh, the time, don't do the crime. I mean, it's so basic. If you don't have money for bail, then you end up in jail. That's how the game is played. We shouldn't have this no bail thing. That is ridiculous. If, if, if it's, if, if you can't afford bail, if you know you have no money, how about you don't go out and do criminal activity? Cause those are the repercussions. If there, there's just no cause and effect anymore. There, there's no repercussions. There's no accountability for any of the actions going on. In, but in the, the hardcore reality is businesses are leaving in droves. I don't know how many I've podcasted in the last couple of months, but it's a lot. It's kind of like all of a sudden, you know, all these businesses turned that corner and they're like, yeah, we're no longer here. Boom, we're done. And we're not talking small mom and pop stores. We are talking about Saks off Fifth Avenue, Nordstrom, Anthropology, although Anthropology is part of the retail um, you know, crisis going on. Um, Whole Foods, Whole Foods had only been there for 13 months. And like, oh, we've got to leave. This is no good. This is not good. You know, when drug addicts OD in their restrooms, that is not exactly what you put on your website of, Hey, come shop at Whole Foods. Is it now guy leaving underneath the sheet and the gurney going to the medical examiner's rig? That's not a good look. Hey, you know, I get, go get some milk at Whole Foods. No, saw a dead body come out of the restroom yesterday. I don't think we're going to shop there anymore. And, you know, then corporate blames it on, yeah, there's a lack of foot traffic. Hmm, lack of foot traffic. Interesting. How come? Wow. Nordstrom's announcement uh, was yet another blow for San Francisco's battered retail industry. You know, you've got the whole retail apocalypse on top of this. And so, you know, what used to be a viable business model might not be. But now, if you're in an area where you're inundated with the kind of external influences you got going on in this part of town in San Francisco, you're going to try and get the heck out of Dodge because you, it's tough to compete for these businesses anyway if they're in true retail because so much stuff is going online. And then specifically in the downtown core, nobody's going there. People aren't going there. They're working from home. All those businesses, a lot of those businesses have relocated to the burbs. I'm reading about that fairly often, fairly consistently. Yeah, we're chasing the money down. As business, they chase the money. Where did the money go? The money went to the burbs where people are working from home. So that's where business happens. So, you know, there's a bunch of double whammies, triple whammies, quadruple whammies going on to these businesses in San Francisco. But it's been, it, it's literally just an ongoing train wreck. And it means I've got, you know, podcasts literally for days. The deteriorating situation in downtown San Francisco, Westfield Mall, told the Washington Post, has left both customers and staff unsafe. The retailer is hardly the first to put up the closing down sign say, signs. The upper market grocery chain Whole Foods has shuttered a flagship store. The H&M, Gap, and Banana Republic have all left. Well, to be fair, some of those were victims of the retail apocalypse as well. Their business models, like the Gap, 
I think H and M and Banana Republic aren't they all owned by the same parent company? And they're all basically on the ropes, but they're not. You know, they're not. You know, they're not fighting back. They're not dodging. They're just taking blow after blow, and then they're, they're going to go down. They're going to go down for the eight count, and boom, never come back. While some British high streets risk becoming boarded up wastelands, they could soon look positively vibrant compared to what used to be known as the Golden City, San Francisco, right? And that's sad. So a lot of folks are looking at a San Francisco. Hey, you've got everything going your way. Everything going your way. You know, you got access to the Orient, access to the Asian markets. You got a bunch of money there. You've got people that are movers and shakers. You've got industry that is, you know, until we go off the comp- the power grid, and we go back to the, you know, light and fires in our caves, until that happens, technology is going to be one, you know, the leading industry, right? So I don't see that going sideways anytime soon. But what we had is, you know, a dump out of the downtown core into the burbs because, you know, the whole COVID thing. And then businesses realized, oh, hey, maybe we can make this work. So you've got a whole bunch of factors going on that policy, woke policy, ultra liberal policy is backfiring and it's having a real negative impact on these areas. Because nobody wants to run a business there anymore. They're just like, well, we've got options elsewhere. There's plenty of space elsewhere. Right now, San Francisco has 18.4 million square feet of truly known vacant office space going on. You know, close to 20 million square feet. That's a lot of office space because so many businesses have left. There's so many uh, subleases going on and subleases that are not going to be renewed. I think you, you could have way higher, way higher figures than that at some point. So there's no great mystery here. Under its ultra woke mayor, London Breed, San Francisco has been testing out a wide array of faddish progressive policies. Absolutely true. Hey, let's see, let's social experiment this and see how this works. Yeah. And and then you've got shoplifting just, you know, going to the moon. You got drugs coming into the city, going to the moon because there's massive demand and there's no real regular, there's no real outlawing of drugs in San Francisco. So why wouldn't, you know, why wouldn't Mexico via China bring in as much as they could possibly bring in and not worry about it? Some people die from overdoses. Ah. Still got customers, you know, galore all day long. They could care less. So in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests, Breed was one of the first to jump on the defund the police bandwagon, cutting $120 million from the law and order budget. And how is that working out now? You've got a massive loss of tax revenue from your downtown core. You've got a ton of businesses just up and closing and leaving. And they ain't coming back, at least not to that location. So then you don't have enough police to keep the city safe. Yeah. This is, this is Portland in a nutshell, right? I mean, same exact thing happened there, except with the difference in Portland, you had Black Lives Matter and Antifa just basically go to town on the downtown core with those protests and bashing windows and, you know, all that craziness. And then the, and the mayor just basically stood by and went, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mayor was out there, you know, rubbing shoulders with these people, causing all this damage. One of the other stories I saw the other day was, you know, Black Lives Matter it was supposed to be helping those in the BIPOC community get the representation, get the, get, you know, whatever rights that they needed. But in the whole, you know, we've got police officers taking out members of the BIPOC community left and right. I mean, that's what was purported. When you start to actually look at some of those storylines, things are very different. But what you had is in those cities where the Black Lives Matters, you know, demonstrations happened, they pounded on black run businesses so much of the time because the areas where these, you know, things happened. Chicago being a great example, Minneapolis being the poster child, Minneapolis, I mean, they destroyed so many businesses there. And it's like, okay, so you are literally taking out the people that you're supposed to be promoting and supporting. And instead, you're just destroying their community. 
Nice work, guys. Well done. Yeah, two thumbs up. Yeah, keep that going. Or don't. That's what we're talking about, right? Cut $120 million from the law and order budget. Bashing out windows left and right. Because nothing says social change like whacking a window with a piece of rebar. So sales and corporate taxes have been pushed up. Homelessness in mean, San Francisco, California, and Portland has some amazing taxes from the standpoint of, ooh, those are high. Those are high. Homelessness has been tolerated right across the city center. Motorists reportedly leave car windows and doors unlocked to deter overnight break-ins. If you follow San Fran news like I do, there is invariably somebody of note being robbed, accosted, car broken into. I mean, they tell you at the, I think it's the Oakland airport. Yeah, maybe you don't want to rent a car here because it's not safe. They're going to see that you're a tourist. And even if you're in the car, they're going to bash your wind out and grab whatever bag. That is happening on the regular. It's just the policy, the liberal policy has made this such a, you know, enterprise of, hey, you know, sell your drugs, steal stuff from our residents. It's all good. It's all good. Come and shoplift from us. We're not really going to prosecute that because, you know, we didn't, uh, we just don't want to put people in jail. And even if you do get caught, we've got a great woke district attorney who's not really doing much of anything as far as criminal activity goes. So don't worry. If you get busted here, yeah, if and when you get busted here, it's going to be okay. We'll take care of you because, you know, we're not, we're not really, we're not really throwing people in jail. That's, that's so, you know, summer of 2020, <laughs> you know, can't have that. Last summer, a group of business officials wrote to officials threatening to stop paying taxes. I think that was in the mission that was led by a guy who owned a gym podcast on this channel. Politicians failed to clear litter from the streets and stop people from openly taking drugs. And the city was shocked by the death of tech entrepreneur Bob Lee last month. All right, you can throw that in, but that's kind of a side incident for me. Yes, it's a murder that took place, but it, it's not cause and effect. It, it was a shocking murder for sure. But it was around, uh, you know, you got tech guy, got other tech bro, and you got a sister involved and a bunch of drugs and somebody ended up just stabbing the other one over something late at night after doing a bunch of drugs. So, you know, that one, okay, you can talk about that. It happened in San Francisco. All right, I'll give it that credit. But, you know, pointing that and saying, oh, look at how San Francisco's decline goes. I'd keep that one out of it because... That's just a, you know, personal tragedy that happened that happened to be in San Fran. So the revered executive was stabbed in a neighborhood not far from Google, Instagram, city offices. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that happened. But again, it's, you know, it's not like that is happening. Actually, San Francisco's, and I'm not trying to defend San Francisco in any way, shape or form, but their violent crime is significantly less than many other cities. And people hold that up as an example of, look, it's not so bad here. The problem is, is with the defunding of the police and with all this other crap going on, is that most crimes are not reported. So you've got way more criminal activity going on, in my opinion, and in many other expert opinions that follow public safety. Criminal activity is way beyond the levels of what are being reported because you know, you're only going to report these kind of incidents so many times and then you're just going to either leave, leave the area, take your business with you and leave. Or if you're a resident, you're just going to hunker down and go, all right, guess this is the way it is. But you're certainly not going to report, you know, criminal activity after criminal activity after criminal activity if nothing's going to happen. You're just not. It's a waste of your time. Plus you get bored of it and you're like, okay, well, I know the end drill. I've been through this rodeo before. We're not doing that. In 2021, foreign direct investment into new projects in San Francisco fell to their lowest level since 2009. And as those shops close, real estate prices are tumbling. Let's not forget how one of the big reasons the San Francisco-based First Republic Bank had to be rescued was because of expected losses on property loans. The city is slipping into a vicious cycle of decline from which it's hard to see any exit. So in my last podcast, I talked about there's an office building in, in, in San Francisco, in downtown San Francisco, that in 2019 was valued. Now, take that with a grain of salt. Some appraiser assigned a value of $300 million to it. Even say it was two fifty. Call it two, call it, call it, call it an even quarter billion, right? Well, they tried to sell it for $180 million. I think it was in 2021. 
but it recently closed for how much? Do you think it was 150? Was it one and a quarter? Was it a hundred? Was it 80? Or was it somewhere between 60 and 67.5 million? 67 million, 500,000. That's the end number. It's either pending or it's closed. Can't really tell right now yet. But it's somewhere going to be somewhere between 60 and 67.5 because three quarters of the building is empty and there's so much office space in San Francisco that's vacant that why would you build this building, which needs about 50 or 60 million bucks I've researched to make it competitive rent wise. So you're going to have to get it massively discounted, number one, because it's basically vacant. The whole thing's almost vacant. Number two, it needs a bunch of renovation. And there's so many other office spaces that are ready to roll already that in order to entice somebody to buy it in this environment and try and put tenants in it at some point is basically a hard no-go. And so, you know, you go from 300 to 60, an 80% drop, whatever the final numbers are going to be. Maybe it's a 75% drop. Either which way, that's, that is an indication of things really going sideways. So and you had the First Republic Bank had to be rescued. They had a run on the depositors' money, right? The city is slipping into a vicious cycle of decline from which it's hard to see any exit. And that's what I talk about all the time down in Portland. What's it going to take to get this squared back around? What's going to have to happen? So San Francisco's problems might seem a long way to this entity, which is in the United Kingdom. But they could soon be mirrored here in the United Kingdom. We have no shortage of ultra-woke local councils and devolved administrations, which are more interested in left-wing virtue signaling than providing decent services, keeping taxes down, or making sure the streets are safe and the rubbish collected. And if you don't follow that kind of standard basic safety protocol, things go sideways. So in Bristol, graffiti is almost everywhere you look. In Brighton, the rubbish remains uncollected for weeks at a time, while popular shopping centers have been closed to everyone apart from cyclists. In Wales, the devolved administration has been bombarding retailers with demands for politically correct measures, such as proposed ban on meal deals, which apparently are not healthy enough, even though to many students or people on low incomes, they might be the only way of staying fed during a cost of living crisis. So you know, we're talking about policy. We're talking about policy that ends up damaging those that it's supposed to help in the first place. Kind of like the whole Black Lives Matter. You know, let's go out and let's really show them what's what by bashing windows, setting buildings on fire in our own community, stealing from stores. I watched it happen here in, in downtown Bellevue. It got rocked by a few hundred kids that came through and just tore things apart, tore things apart. Police department was just totally rocked on their back heels. They didn't know this was coming. It came and it was just boom. But the next time Black Lives Matter and Antifa came to town, things were a little different. There was a squadron of cops on hand um, that basically just ran right up the back end of the, uh, of the, you know, the march, the, Take to the streets, F the police, no justice, no peace. Because that really gets you some social change, right? That along with bashing windows. I mean, that that really says we care about the community. Hey, I know you're going to have to repair your store. And I know we took some stuff from your store. And I know you're a BIPOC-owned store. But, you know, this is just kind of what we're doing. It's summer of love. So people in the UK are even there going, Good Lord, look at what's happening there. San Francisco should be an absolute shining star of the West Coast. And instead, it's like, oh, yeah, ugh. no go holding my convention there. Let's take our business and let's leave. Let's go elsewhere. Boarded up storefronts, graffiti, drugs, open air drug markets, fentanyl deaths. Instead, that's what San Francisco's got. Crazy stuff, right? But, you know, it's not everybody just in the U.S. watching this. People in the U.K., just like this article, are also going, oh, look at San Francisco across the pond. That's not a good sign. All right. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you in the next one. Love to have you subscribe. 
hit that notification bell, share the content. If you find this interesting, or you think there's somebody else out there who might like to hear from some real estate guy that talks about a lot of stuff happening in liberal cities that are going sideways. Thanks again. We'll catch up in the next one. Bye for now.